Hello there, my crafty buggers! Back again with another sci fi tabletop RPG scene. Before we continue, make sure to pay respects to the YouTube's Holy Trinity. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any of the future uploads. Now that that's been dealt with, I can get back to the story. The previous two scenes were in a space environment where the whole point was to introduce the viewer with the vastness of the universe. You can click the cards in the upper right corner to check them out. This one is more grounded, pun not intended, though it is a ship in the process of docking. A Vastuli class transport vessel to be exact. It's the choice starship of dignitaries, aristocrats and moguls of the Vanadium Union in the Omega Horizon setting. But it's more fancy than efficient, and here's why. It's big, like 70 meters in length, that's about 230 feet for you who are not familiar with the metric system. But in all its volume, it's designed to carry only 10 passengers. Just imagine how generous those rooms are. That's what made the Vastuni class popular among the luxury interstellar travel service providers. Despite its bulkiness though, it's one of the fastest and most maneuverable ships of that size. And due to its Vandarium drive, it can cross vast distances between systems in half the time most other ships can. Though its weapon arsenal is quite limited. Having only two turrets is not a lot, but more often than not, it can simply outrun its enemies if it finds itself outmatched. Okay, that's enough about the ship. For those of you who don't know by now, Omega Horizon is an upcoming dystopian sci-fi tabletop RPG by Paleo Gaming. I'll just put all of the relevant links in the description down below so you can research it on your own and join in on the whole playtesting fun if you wish. Here I'm using another art piece by Gareth. I'll leave the links to his portfolio and social media in the description as well. As always, I started out in Photoshop and separated the elements I wanted to include in the animation by masking them out. Pretty straightforward. I used the Content Aware tool to fill the background where the ship, the platform and the buildings used to be, and I added a few brush strokes to the building behind the platform to complete it. I imported the Photoshop file into After Effects and distributed the layers in ZSpace to give them depth background being the farthest, buildings in the middle, and finally the ship and the platform being the closest to the viewer. I used a null object to parent the camera and position the keyframes to imitate a shaky handheld footage. You'll see that I exaggerated a bit at first, then toned it down later because it was so shaky that I felt nauseated looking at it. Some of you After Effects users might be asking yourselves now, why didn't this crafty bugger use the wiggle expression for the camera? He might not be that crafty after all. Well, I see your wiggle expression and I raise you a loopable video. The camera needs to start at end at the same position and wiggle is random. Imagine catching the camera in the same position twice while it moves randomly. That would be a pain in the neck. Attaching the wiggle amplitude to a slider wouldn't work either, because it would need to start and end gradually, which would produce a bit of an uneven shake. Now, I know that what I just said sounds like an oxymoron, but take it as you will. And it was a 14 second loop anyway, it's not like I had to spend hours setting up the camera movement only. The next thing I did was make the ship hover. After a few tries, I realized that the best way is to simply make it move up and down in about 3 second increments. I created and masked a solid layer and put it into overlay blending mode at 100% opacity to produce some light coming out of the ship's exhausts or whatever you want to call those things. I parented the layer to the ship and expanded the masks each time the ship moved down to give it the feeling as if it's trying to maintain the height. As for the flickering lights on the platform, they're just red and white solid layers in overlay blending mode that I parented to the platform layer and keyframed the opacity to alternate between on and off in 1 second increments. The constant lights on the buildings and the platform are just white solid layers, again in overlay blending mode, masked and feathered to produce the halo around the windows and the floodlights. Very simple. And now for the tricky part. The ship casting a moving shadow on the platform. Listen carefully. Step 1. Make a copy of the ship layer and a copy of the platform layer. Step 2. Parent the ship copy to the ship, so that the ship's movement affects the movement of the copy. Step 3. Move the ship copy on top of the platform, both in the composition and in the layer order. Step 4. Set the ship copy as the platform copy's alpha track mat. Step 5. Using the hue saturation effect, completely reduce the master lightness of the platform copy and set it to soft light blending mode. 
And congratulations, you have a shadow on the platform corresponding to the ship's movement. Bravissimo! Leave a comment if you need me to explain the process once again, I'll be happy to write it down for you. I used the free smoke footage that I downloaded from VidEasy to make a bit of an atmosphere and separate the foreground from the background elements. The smoke layers have a bluish tint though, and I didn't like how it looked on an overall greenish tinted image, so I desaturated them and adjusted the levels until I was satisfied with the look. But when I finished the whole composition I thought that the ship looked too bright, so I lowered the brightness by some 10% or so. And for the final touch I applied a dark bluish green vignette. And yeah, now it's done. I'll let you enjoy the rest of the process with some music by Nomen, one of my favorite producers out there, and I'll be back with the final word soon. Thanks for being here until the end, I really appreciate that. If you're still here, that means that you enjoy the video. I hope you realize how much effort I put into creating this content, so make sure that you're subscribed and receiving notifications in order not to miss anything. Another video should be coming next week. There will be two more animations I'm making for Omega Horizon, and when I'm done I'll be moving on to the item illustrations I'm actively working on for my upcoming Kickstarter, a D&D and Pathfinder supplement. If you'd like some free supplements, check the links in the description for my website. You'll find the crit chart and the fumble table in the download section. And again, I suggest scrolling a little bit further down the description box to see more of Gareth's work and find out more about Paleo Gaming's upcoming actual play podcast and Kickstarter. Until next time, this is Crafty and I bid you farewell.